Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. When I started this podcast in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women business owners, creatives, and entrepreneurs. In each episode, my guests provide resources, valuable tips, and inspiration. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strength to achieve success on their own terms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. I am so glad that you can join us today. And um, I'm going to introduce my guest. Bronwyn Jane has been aware of her connection to the spirit world since she was eight years old in 2017, after over 10 years of training with some of Australia's leading metaphysical teachers and world-renowned psychic mediums. Bronwyn embraced her ability professionally, and prior to that, she started her own successful online perfume business, and she had a successful career in banking and finance. Her wealth of knowledge and experience in her grounded and compassionate style have caught the attention of people around the globe, and Bronwyn is often invited to speak on her field of expertise internationally. So welcome to the show, Bronwyn. Thank you for having me. It's my, I, I'm really looking forward to talking to everyone today. So thanks. Yes, yes. And so am I. So um, you have got some background of different things that you've done and accomplished. And, you know, I really just would like you just to share how you got started on this path to um, what you're doing right now. So as you said in your introduction, um, I've been aware of energy and the connection to the spirit world since I was quite young, but I just really used that as I grew up to manoeuvre through life and and to sort of get those little hints and, and assistance from the spirit world. So it wasn't really until I became a mother that I really embraced who I was and, and that's what started that learning journey. But of metaphysical things but at the same time I was balancing this career in the banking and finance world and it's very analytical it's so it's a total contrast to being connected to energy and but there was a major push with my child being the same as me that I really needed to seek this knowledge so I was sort of balancing two lives it's like I was you know being this professional and, and quite successful at it um, within the banking and industry world, but then I needed to understand energy so I could parent consciously a child that I realised was just like me. So that's what started me on the quest for knowledge was like, oh, i need got a little human here that is like me and I need to understand this and be a really conscious parent. So that sort of is what started the process for me to go and get that formal education because I wanted to parent differently to how I'd been parented. So this is what opened that doorway. And through that process, my own awareness of who I was and how I work started to sort of bubble up to the surface. My intention was never to um, use this ability for anyone except myself I was actually realistically being a little bit selfish I was going to keep it for me and and my loved ones and just use it that way but obviously the universe had a different plan for me Mm -hmm. so I obtained this training and then it's almost like things just started to happen in my professional life where I changed Um, careers making a conscious choice once again about I need to parent this young human and I and I want to be available for them so I thought I'm going to start up my own business so I started up my own business because I've always had that entrepreneurial push to do that I've always coming up with ideas so I started a business with a hundred dollars and it ended up being very successful with a quite a large turnover within half a million dollars within the first year. So it was just sort of flowing for me and I could balance motherhood and and balance a career because I still needed a career. I still needed a purpose. I I wasn't someone that could just stay at home. That wasn't for me. So, and I loved this career. It's, you know, at the Christmas time when it's really busy, I could easily do 20 hours a day, did it all the time. 
it was just my passion. I it allowed me to be really creative, but also use my analytical mind and be a mother. So it was the best of everything for me. But what started to happen was as I was getting this knowledge off to the side, which was almost like a hobby for me, there was an, I'm going to say it's like an itch on the soul where things just start to what you love, not love as much, and you get a little bit uncomfortable and you just know that there's more. You're not quite in the right spot like you thought you were. And that's how I describe it. It is like that itch that we have and we can't quite put a word on it. We can't understand why we don't feel when we're in the right spot. We feel like there's more. And this is what was happening. It was becoming more and more as I got more and more knowledge for this purpose of conscious parenting. And as through that process, I had a a local teacher that invited me to practice what I had been learning for years and years, which is called a a student reading day. Now, when she asked me to do this, I'm like, oh, no, (laughs) anything but (laughs) no, this is not for me. Um, This is not why I signed up for these kind of things. And she's like, oh, that's okay. I'll come back and I'll check with you when we get closer to the day. I'm like, okay, I'm still going to say no. That's my sister. I was like, no, you're wasting your time. Anyway, she rang up and in my head I'm still saying no, but something short-circuited between my brain and my mouth and yes came out. And I'm, <laughs> after it came out, I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> what did I just agree to? <laughs> and she said, I said to her, oh, I'll just do one practice reading. I won't do a full day like what everyone else is doing. And she's like, okay, well, we'll just let the universe, God, you know, higher power, whatever we want to call it, work that out for you. I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) On the inside, I'm starting to freak out. It's like, what have I just said yes to? What's going to happen? Um, Anyway, I I went to the day and I I turned up and I was expecting one practice client and I had six. So um, once again, I go through that, oh, my goodness, what have I just done? And completed the readings and, and and did all the work that was required. And at the end of it, I'm like, oh, I see why people do this now. I could understand the benefit for it. But still I had this wonderful career on the side of this perfume business that was doing very well that um, I loved. Even though there was a bit of a shift happening within me, I still loved it. And so I'm like, I'll try and balance See if I can just do a few of these, what they call reading, so connecting with spirit and delivering messages to people and still have the business. So I'm trying to have everything because I thought, well, I've sort of done it before, so I can continue to have everything. Surely I can. And obviously those higher powers had a different plan. They're like, (laughs) you think you can, girl, but there's no way you're having everything. (laughs) Um, we have other plans for you and what and I'm one of those people that I think I'm a bit of a slow learner because I'm like ah we'll see so (laughs) (laughs) and so what they kept giving me little universal I'm going to say like nudges and pushes and signs and this type of thing but this is where the slow learning comes in because I just ignore it and just keep doing Mm -hmm. what I want to do thinking that I know best for me Mm because I always thought that because being kind of analytical and not connected to um, my instincts as much as I should have been. And so they, what they, I noticed happen was that within this business that I loved, there was a whole heap of obstacles being placed there. And normally I would have worked through them because that's the kind of person I am. Like it's an obstacle is just an opportunity for me, but that, desire to do that was less Mm -hmm. and I was just being pulled more and I noticed that you know my my desire my passion was being pulled more to this other world to to be able to be of service for people by translating energy delivering messages connecting with those that have transitioned I was being pulled over that I wanted to do that more and it got to the point where this balancing act that I was trying to do, I no longer wanted to do it. 
Mm. There was a, mm-hmm. an innate sort of shift that was occurring within me. And then I just made a decision. Like if I, if this is what's supposed to be where I need to go, because I could see all the things getting taken out of my life. And this is what I've noticed and learned through committing to understanding energy is if you're a slow learner like me, that <laughs> you don't listen to your gut and you don't listen to your intuition it's almost like that higher power just says, well, we're just going to take things out of your world. Mm. We're going to move things. We're either going to do that or we're going to make it really hard for you. So you have to make a choice that you don't want to make. Mm. Mm-hmm. And This is what was happening for me. Things were getting taken out of my world. So I was getting space made. So I had more time to commit to this other world. And then there were challenges put in front of me trying to course correct me, trying to move me over where I needed to be. And I'm like, oh, okay, I finally got it now. I'll stop fighting what you're putting in front of me and I'm just going to commit and do it. Mm -hmm. And it was, and I just set a a date. I put that peg in the ground and I said, on this date, I'm going to turn off that business. And I did, I because I, once again, had a bit of an issue with trust. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Mm. Uh, this is mm-hmm. a big deal. So I thought, I'm not going to sell it. I'm just going to shelf it in case I need to turn mm. it back on, mm-hmm. start it back up. And so that's what I did. Put the date and just turned it off and then thought, all right, I'm going to commit to this. And so I made that conscious choice. But then I'm like, okay, I've committed. I've turned it everything off. Now what? Mm. And so I'm there like waiting. It's like, okay, um, you know, God, <laughs> universe, whoever, like I have to do this. Um, I'm waiting now. What happens? Um, and it was those kind of thoughts. And then it was interesting because things just flowed. Things just came in nice and easy. And that's what I learned was too is when it's easy, when it just happens, when it just flows, we're in the right spot. Mm. when it is challenging difficult there's obstacles they are to get us to make changes to course correct we're not quite in the right spot Mm -hmm. and this was a real thing for me that and I work with this and and follow this all the time now if it's flowing if it's easy if things just fall into place if we've got those synchronicities all those kind of things we're on the right we're going the right way we're going the right way Mm -hmm. And then if we have those obstacles, we have those little blocks, those little things that are a little bit hard, it's like, okay, there's something that's not quite right. I'm going to take a pause. I'm going to have a look at this. Where is the adjustment that is required? Mm -hmm. And so this is what I noticed when I sort of did that leap of faith and I did that jump across to this totally different world was I'm going to, it just flowed. Now, I'm going to say not easy. When Mm. you decide that you are going to say to the world, hey, guess what? Um, I translate energy. Um, I'm not a scientist, but I translate energy. And you know those people that um, have passed away? Well, I can still hear and see them. Well, everyone thinks you're crazy. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, weren't you that girl that worked in the bank that used to, you know, run all these departments? And so, yeah, I was that girl. So, <laughs> and so there's a whole heap of things happen when you say yes to this kind of work. One, everyone thinks you're crazy. Um, it, you have a whole heap of people's fears pushed onto mm. you. Um, mm-hmm. You have to deal mm-hmm. with faith mm-hmm. and religious beliefs because I was brought up in a religious family, so you have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to deal with family. You have to deal with constantly proving yourself every single day. Mm. Every single day Mm -hmm. you're tested. So to say yes to this would be so Mm -hmm. much easier to stay in selling perfumes, let me tell you, because (laughs) saying yes to being tested every single day, to being everyone, you know, looking at you with squinty eyes, like, "Mm, can you really do that? Mm -hmm. Show me. Prove it. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. So it's a big, it's a big yes when you say yes to doing mm-hmm. this. Um, and then we factor in the fact that there is a business aspect to it, and that's even a challenge when you say yes to you and you because you still have to feed yourself. Right. Um, mm-hmm. 
you are confronted with because it is this type of work, the, there's a common saying was, well, you should just do it for free. And I did do it for free for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And and because I did have a chat, you know, an internal battle with this is a blessing, so I should just share it. Mm-hmm. And I was had the opportunity to connect with a couple of very well known international mediums, and one of them described it that in a way that made sense to me. It's like, well, you're doing the service, whatever you're doing, the connection, the translation of energy. He do, he to himself he says that is free, but the my time. That's what he charges for. And he said it's a bit like a mechanic. You know, you have to pay, you know, for the service, but there's mm-hmm. other aspects that are right. you might. And they're like, oh, okay, all right, I can wrap my brain around that. Uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> very logical. <laughs> yeah, I thought, okay, I can work with that. My, yeah, my, <laughs> my brain, the way it works, has to have those kind of things. So it, that is a challenge as well. It's because for whatever reason, this industry, that is something that we battle with is putting a value on what we do even though when we have that argument about the, you know that it's it may be a talent it may be a gift whatever people call it um and so therefore they say well you know it should be done by the kindness of your heart which is you know i understand that but then i think well you know you think of someone that's fabulous at singing that also yeah. is a gift mm-hmm that's it's true. a blessing that's been bestowed upon them. So not everyone can hold a tune. I know I can't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. But some of them make one wonderful livings out of that by sharing that with people. Mm-hmm. So it is a, a, a battle that I'm um, anyone that says yes to this kind of work is that entrepreneurial aspect of it that we have to embrace because you do you just want to do it all for free and help everyone go, yes, I'll do this and do that. Mm-hmm. But there is a practicality based on the world that we live in Right, that mm-hmm. we do have to put a price on our head, mm-hmm. so to speak, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that is a challenge for people in this industry when you say yes to it. One because of what's projected at us that it should be done for free, that there shouldn't be an entrepreneurial aspect to it, and I understand that, and I did battle with that myself. But then there is the practicality of it as mm-hmm. well. Um, so it's it's an interesting journey to have travelled, to be travelling because it's, it's still a, it's always something that I sort of manoeuvre through as we go through this. Because the other thing too that when we say yes to this kind of work and, and it's a life, it's not just a work too because it's it's who you are. So it it is not only do you do it as sort of work if you we want to label it that way but it is the essence of who we are so it's you can't turn it off to a point like you Mm -hmm. you are what you are and so there's that whole coming out of the closet aspect when you tell people hey this is who I are who I am Mm -hmm. um and that's an interesting process when we go through that anyone goes out with family friends colleagues as the example I expressed before, is that, aren't you the girl that worked in the bank, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that, so that's a bit like coming out of the closet in other ways mm-hmm. because you never know mm-hmm. how someone's going to take you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that leap ha- is a multifaceted leap that was experienced mm-hmm. that, I, that I, when I said yes and I did that jump, it was as I said, it had multi, many layers to it, to that yes, mm-hmm. and taking quite some time to be able to embrace it fully because it's an interesting industry to jump into. Mm. It's not what people think it will be mm-hmm. because there is that whole entrepreneurial aspect to it. And so there's a conflict between the spiritual aspect of it mm-hmm. And the entrepreneurial part of it and Mm -hmm. finding that balance and keeping that humility because it's a big industry. It's $2 billion a year and growing. So Mm -hmm. it's a big industry 
mm-hmm. with a lot of egos and a lot of things going on. Banking so much easier. Perfume so much easier. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so that is the I'm going to say the cliff notes, if you like, of the leap. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> So as far as as realizing this could be an entrepreneurial um, effort, doing what you have a skill for and an affinity for, and now you're in this other world where, as you're saying, people may be thinking, why are you charging for this or that? I mean, um, or is, is there any kind of preparation for people like yourself who go into that field that says it's it's any kind of mentoring or does anybody say, you know, hey, let me help you because I've been down this road too. So let me show you some things that maybe you should consider. Or is it that you feel that your own experience um, in the business world helped you maybe more so as you're navigating this? For me, when I made that leap, I didn't have the support that you describe but I have mm-hmm. since found it and I know there are more people that have probably been through a similar process to me to make that leap and not have the support and so now are offering it to others so it's starting to be there for mm-hmm. those that are sort of coming after us which is nice I drew on all my experience mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. the banking and the and the business the perfume business and I know that once again, from doing what I do, that nothing is wasted on what we experience. So Mm -hmm. all those things that I went through with setting up a perfume business, creating the online presence, the marketing for the online business, all the financial aspect of that, you know, managing customer expectations, all that, even though different, is transferable. So I never felt that it was ever a waste of what I had done. I It just needed to be tweaked so it could move into a different industry. Mm-hmm. And as I said, for those coming through now and making this jump and deciding that life is more than what they're currently doing, they're, they've got that itch on their soul, there is now people to help them maneuver through this because it is a big jump Mm -hmm. it's not like we're jumping over a puddle we're jumping over Mm -hmm. a lake um so it is a big leap that people take and so it's lovely to see that now within the industry these um, support mechanisms and and businesses and courses and programs specific for this industry are starting to show up Mm -hmm. because there are certain things because of the kind of people that say yes to this work um, they need this additional support because a lot of people that are inclined to connect to energy may not be analytical like me because mm-hmm. I have to mm-hmm. say it does make it a little bit more challenging when you question everything and are a sceptic yourself to say yes to this. So a lot of people have a different energy to them. They have a different way of thinking. They may be more of a creative kind of person. So they don't necessarily always have those other attributes that you need to be able to turn it into something that can sustain you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great point because a lot of times people who are creative or come out of those fields sometimes seem to feel a lot of guilt that they're charging for these creations or people make them feel that way. So they don't have a right to ask um, for money for what they're creating. So it it just seems like there's so much of that tension in our cultures, I suppose. Maybe that's a good way to frame it, that, that if you're creative and you're giving and you have all that going on, you're not supposed to get involved with money. (laughs) And it doesn't make sense. It really... I don't know where that started, but I think it's very destructive for the people, particularly now where you seem to have so many creators out here trying to do what they do and online and, and all that. It just seems like that's always a struggle for people to really find that balance for themselves. And I agree. And the way I've had to change the way that I've thought about money is to think of it as energy. Mm-hmm. And because I think of everything that way, every 
everything is energy, every interaction is energy, every thought is energy. This is just the world that we live in based on what we understand from quantum science. Mm -hmm. I have to go into that analytical mind because I am that person. I am not that woo-woo um psychic medium I'm just not I'm the science one so I have to go to that place and so based on that money is just an 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 energy exchange Mm -hmm. someone has put energy into creating something whatever that may be and the exchange from the other person is money and money is Mm -hmm. just energy we print it onto paper or we put a number on a card but at the end of the day it is energy and so it's an exchange an agreed exchange and if we don't have a balance within anything the universe has to always balance itself energy has to balance itself it can't be out of balance it will cause a problem so there always needs to be that balance that's just how energy works so Mm -hmm. when it doesn't it will always try and correct itself so we need to make sure that we this is why we have to accept as as creative people or or people working with energy working in this industry or any other kind of creative person to be open to accepting that energy exchange that we call money knowing that it is about balancing what you give and what you get we have to have that it's also important too because otherwise if we don't allow people to honor what you've created by giving you the money or the energy exchange, what happens is it's not valued as much. Mm -hmm. Right. And coming to that realisation is also important is because when we give things and give things and give things just with love, intention, you know, we want to be a nice person, we want to help someone out. (laughs) I wish it wasn't like this, but it's a majority of the time the other person does not always value it as much as what they would have if they had given an exchange, given something in return. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not always, yeah. but it is very common. Mm-hmm. That's true. And so once again, it's things that we just have to be aware of um, and, and it helps us if we think about it this way that we can be more open to putting some kind of number on what we do. Hmm. Yes. And sometimes that can be very hard to find what those numbers should be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, Three titles. <laughs> that could be the challenge. And I mean, in, in what you're, you're doing, um, did that mean you'd have to you really like have to look to see what other people were doing and charging and then see how you would structure your own business and your own fees along those yeah. lines? Because I did, as I said, I did start, you know, doing everything for free and and that type of thing and then I put a small value on my head. But this is what I noticed then that I I did that and then I would look over, you know, to the left and see what someone else was doing and, and people that I knew, friends, contemporaries, they would engage in those services and and the services were exactly the same, what I was offering and the other person was offering. And so they were happy to pay, you know, three times what I was offering and they valued that more and they valued mine less because Mm. I actually valued mine less. Mm. And that's what I realised was the value that I put on what I did was it had a bearing on how other people valued it. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I had to value what I did. Right. That's true. And once I valued what I did and I could quantify it with a number because that's the world we're in, we're in, we Mm -hmm. we use those type of things. So I had to quantify Mm -hmm. it with a number. And once I started to value what I did, which was linked to who I was, Mm -hmm. they were tied together because of the work Mm -hmm. that I did. And it would be the same with creative people that Mm -hmm. do anything that's kind of creative. There will be a link to self-value when we're doing these pricings. So I had to really value myself. And then I noticed people valued what I did because I valued what I did. Mm -hmm. And I valued Mm. then who I was and, and, and how I showed up to do what I did. And that was the real shift and change. Yes. 
because of who I am, I definitely went and did all that normal business stuff and and looked at contemporaries and looked at, you know, markets. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I am that contrast. I am that black and white. Mm-hmm. I'm that yin and yang. So I, I could not, I still did that. Mm-hmm. That was part of help working out that number. But I, I just had to push myself on an internal sense to go, I need to value what I do. There was a, it was like a discussion internally. Mm-hmm. And then I worked out that my challenge with that and my block to valuing and putting a number on it was how I saw myself. Mm-hmm. So they were linked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I worked that out, there's a whole shift that occurred mm-hmm. as far as how I saw myself, the self-belief. It's like this just blossomed once I made that link. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, it's like a little flower opening up. <laughs> that was a big one. <laughs> so it's a very interesting process when we think about it from a business perspective and, and that even that number perspective, that money and, and that type of thing, the linkage to self-belief, the linkage to how we view money, how mm-hmm. we even doing transactions, financial transactions, <clears throat> whether we can sell, whether we can't sell, this is an internal thing, internal Mm -hmm. belief systems that we don't Mm -hmm. always identify. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Yeah, we definitely go through that kind of thing all the time in terms of money and relationships with it and value and all that, all that stuff is tied together. And I think something else was really interesting that you were saying about, um, when things are falling into place that they are more on track or, or that's really where you should be heading as opposed to always the struggles and op- um, obstacles that were coming up and were, were courts correcting you. And I think what's interesting is in, again, culturally, it seems like we get the message that we're always supposed to struggle and if you're struggling and you have these obstacles, that's great because, and then, I can understand growing from obstacles, but constantly having to hit these walls and you think that's wonderful. I, I think we're kind of, we kind of value things that seem to not be where we should be. It's, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's interesting because we do learn through lessons. I mean, we never, most people don't go and evaluate a situation if it was wonderful. They go, oh, that was great. And they move on and they think about it. So we do have to have some obstacles, some challenges. For me, the key is to acknowledge when it's occurring. If we're in that obstacle, rather than wait until we get to the end of it and then we use hindsight to work out what the takeaway was from it. That makes that obstacle, that challenge last so much longer. Mm -hmm. If we're in the challenge, whilst we're in this challenge to say, okay, I'm going to just take a few minutes to just sit, connect to, you know, my gut, my instinct. What, why am I going through this? Why, why is this happening? What, you know, what should I learn from this? If we can do that while we're in the chaos of the obstacle, because let's face it, sometimes they can be a lot. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed is it can make it shorter because you can integrate what you need to learn while you're in it rather than at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So it can make it shorter. So that's one thing if we've got these certain obstacles, certain lessons that we can't avoid because there are some that we just can't avoid. We're here on a level. We On a level, we agreed to some of the things that we're going through. But that's hard to believe when we think about some of the things that we go through. Like, really, I agreed to this before. You know, that seems like ridiculous. Who would do that? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Let me tell you, I say that to myself sometimes. Like, why would I say yes to this? (laughs) But so we do have those big, and you can tell because they're big things, really big. um, And they're quite often to do with relationships of various kinds of relationships, sometimes a relationship with ourselves, sometimes romantic, sometimes into other relationships. That's where a lot of our lessons lie. The other things that are not so big, they're just sort of more, oh, everything doesn't go right for me. It's, mm-hmm. you know, one thing after another. They're our opportunities to go, I'm, 
I am beating my head against the wall because I'm not taking notice of or looking at what I need to change. Because if there's some kind of repeat lesson or a repeat circumstance, so if we've got things that are just repeating, the characters might be different, the environment might be slightly different, but it still feels the same, the same, the same. For me, that is, okay, the individual that's experiencing this needs to respond differently. So if we respond differently, it short circuits it and whoever we're engaging with or whatever the situation is has to then respond differently because you've responded differently and it shifts it. So it changes Mm -hmm. it. We have those situations. We have other ones, as I said, these minor ones that are just saying, I need to look at what I'm doing, like on a a minor level, go, okay, what do I need to shift, change, do something different, make a different choice, make a different decision. Mm -hmm. Or so it can be those, or it can be, this is just hard, 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 hard. It just feels like that. It's just not working. I can't get where I need to go. This, when they're like that, when they feel like that, we're just not quite on the right road. And sometimes mm-hmm. all we've got to do is change one thing. And it's normally us, something within mm-hmm. us, the way we respond, because we can't change anyone else. Mm-hmm. And then it changes the whole energy within the situation. And we can then move forward until we get the next little thing. Go, okay. It's almost mm-hmm. like a like a a bollard on a road. It's like, oh, I can only drive so far. Now I've got to go around it. Mm. Now I've got to go. It's like that type of situation I see it as. Mm-hmm. So there for me, there's those signposts in life to go, okay, it's time for me now to pause and reevaluate something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes life a lot of sense. It's not meant to be. Overall, it is not meant to be as hard as we make it. Mm-hmm. As someone that, as I said, was a slow learner, <laughs> I own that. I'm a recovering slow learner. <laughs> um, it's because I wouldn't take note and didn't know, I was unaware, no one had educated me in this, that those signposts in life were there actually to make me consider things, to consider myself, consider what needed to be changed so I could get past it and move on Mm. to a smoother road Mm -hmm. I had to work that out the slow way Mm -hmm. yeah I I, I'm guessing most people probably (laughs) would find find that that's what they would have to do because that's not what we're used to how we're used to responding to those kinds of situations so it takes a lot to learn that um to be able to do that so you know in terms of what you do and and your gift your skills um has it ever been disconcerting for you to accept that you have this gift this sight this skill however you you know would like to describe it the actual um skill or or whatever whatever human word we want to put on (laughs) the way that it's more that my body's just far more sensitive than and my hearing and eyes are far more sensitive than others really sort of I can just that's sort of I go into that science part again it's that's all it is um as far as the actual encounters the experiences this type of thing for me no and I think that's because of experiencing it when I was so young now that being said there have been some moments where some experiences have almost made my toes curl and I'm like oh wow that was next level um (laughs) but because of my character traits I don't mind those kind of things I'm one of those children that just used to love um all those scary movies Mm -hmm. (laughs) so (laughs) So I guess that works (laughs) so if that comes a little bit into my reality that's okay (laughs) I'm like oh it's like I'm living the movie um (laughs) That's what it is. But but generally, no, my challenges are more the um the people that I encounter in life. That's more the, the challenges in regards to this being attuned to energy is more of that. The mm-hmm. the energy sort of from the other world is not an, an issue because what the when people pass, there's a 
absolutely phenomenal shift and change that occurs within them. So even if they weren't great when they were here, they weren't great people, they didn't do great things, maybe they weren't good guys or girls. Mm-hmm. As part of when they have crossed over, it's almost like they remember what they did, but that doesn't stay who they are. So connecting mm-hmm. with someone that's on the other side that may have been, as I said, not a good person here, they're not anyone to be scared of now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's not, that's not a problem for me at all. It's never caused me concern even, I mean, uh, that being said though, I'm like, okay, well, I understand why you're saying sorry now that you've told me everything that you did when you were here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big sorry. Um, so I <laughs> But you have to allow them to do that as well because they do realise once they've crossed over that they're the things that they did that weren't great Mm -hmm. and they do want to make amends. Um, But other other than that, it's, um, it's an amazing experience to be able to connect with, you know, people that I don't know, like so, you know, people's family and and to hear their stories and, and to be able to experience all different kinds of personalities on the other side. It, it, it's absolutely amazing. It's what makes me um, get up every day and do it is just like, I wonder who's going to show up today and I, what mm-hmm. what amazing story are they going to tell me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> because it's oh. like having access to every book that you want. It's just like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, well, I have, I really also have to ask, I mean, you know, a lot of uh, depictions in movies about, um, you know, people who can, can speak to or, or communicate with um, people who passed over. Do you find they're really totally unrealistic or do you think they ever get anything right? It's interesting. So I, I watch all those kinds of movies um, from, the, you know, as I said, I used to be a child that would watch these kind of things. So now as an adult that sort of experiences this, I watch it from an analytical mind. I, as again, I slip back into that and go, mm-hmm. that's not exactly how it happens or that's not how it feels. Now, sometimes it, sometimes I go, oh, yeah, it's sort of like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do, some are accurate and some aren't. And it's interesting, as I said um, earlier on, some of the reason why I am where I am now is because of my child. And so we had lots of experiences when he was young and, and his were quite extreme, some of them. Mm-hmm. And then when he grew, cause he's 19 now. And so when he, I think he might've been like 17, we watched the sixth sense mm-hmm. and he'd never seen it before. And he sat there and he said at the end of it, he goes, oh, mum, that's like watching a home movie. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I, it's like, yes, I lived it with you. I understand. Um, wow. And so that one was actually kind of interesting <laughs> for him because all the experiences about being scared to go to the toilet and because you didn't understand what you saw. And and so that one, I thought, yeah, that's mm-hmm. um there's a lot of things within that one that do resonate, but some, there's always an element that it's sort of got, they've got the energy of what occurs. They've just had to make it a little bit more dramatic or mm-hmm. emphasize it a little bit more just so people will want to watch it. Mm-hmm. Right. That's true. Yeah. That, that's one of those movies that I was like, oh, this is pretty interesting. <laughs> You know, but in a way, it almost makes you, since it kind of focuses so much on how frightened he is in the beginning, it just makes you think that if if you even could do something like that, you'd be afraid to do it because it just seems like it was so, at least awful until he made his peace with it, which I guess really is his journey to go on. But there is so much emphasis on the frightening parts that I think, you know, the people that can do these things or can connect may feel really afraid to even attempt Mm -hmm. that. And that is very common as well, because when you don't understand something, Mm. it can be scary because, as I said, those experiences were exactly what my child experienced because he didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. And I even find that with adults because I do teach people how to connect with their innate 
ability to translate energy. And it can be a little bit scary until they understand what happens when you transition. So, you know, that shift and change within souls as they go across to the other side. And that anyone that does sort of come towards an individual, so, you know, sometimes we have our, you know, grandfather, mother that will come towards us, we may get scared because they feel different now because we can only feel their energy. So you just need that understanding and more knowledge about what it's like. And once you have knowledge, that saying knowledge is power is so true. Once Mm -hmm. you understand how it works, it takes a lot of the fear away. Sometimes people are still scared about seeing them because it's just being startled. It's just like, oh, I didn't expect to see them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that, that fear will stop abilities. So if you're scared of something, it can stop you from seeing them because it, your loved ones on the other side do not want to scare you. They they sort of don't understand to a point that them just coming close to see you baking cookies is going to terrify you. They're like, I just want to make sure you're putting the right amount of chocolate chips in the <laughs> bowl how I taught you before I left and you're freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> so from their perspective they don't understand because they're just coming to make sure that you know that you're okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but they feel mm-hmm. different to us and we don't understand that mm. so with knowledge when we understand how they feel and how they now communicate and what they do it's it can allow us if we have that knowledge to continue relationships with those that have crossed over. And that's what I find absolutely phenomenal that we can still have relationships. And I've even seen people repair relationships. Mm -hmm. And I find Mm -hmm. that just amazing. It's just about working out how to communicate now because they don't communicate in the same way that they used to. Right. It would be totally I was saying it's a bit like knowing how to do Morse code. <laughs> Interesting way to look at your new version of Morse code. <laughs> I think that would be that would certainly change um, people's perspective on, on life and and beyond if they really if that was something more that I think Western culture embraced then I, yes, I would think does. that would change so many things. I noticed for myself it, it really did because that we have a lot of fear around um, death and understanding that it's a change, not an end, mm-hmm. and it takes away some of the fear, for you, like for your own passing when you consider your own passing or someone that you love. So that's understanding that does make a major difference in how we live and also understanding too what happens when we cross to the other side will the fact that (laughs) this is interesting when we cross to the other side if we've been not a great person we have to feel the pain emotional that we and physical to a point but sort of a memory of that so we don't have a physical body of what we cause to people And so being aware Mm -hmm. that whatever we do to someone here, we're actually going to feel that when we transition, we're going to have a real strong awareness around what we actually did Mm -hmm. might make us be a little bit kinder to each Mm -hmm. other. If we understood that you can't do these actions and they're, and that you won't have some kind of ripple effect that you ultimately will feel yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Because that is part of what happens. And this is why, as I said to you before, that someone that was not great when they were here, the shift and change in them when they're on the other side because they've gone through that process where they understand now what they did to someone and the pain that that person felt, Mm -hmm. that real emotional pain. They've had to feel that. And so that's why quite often, like most of the time, pretty much 100% of the time, they will, that soul will come and say, I am, they really understand. It's like, I am so sorry. Like we don't even have a proper human word to express Mm -hmm. how sorry they are because they now truly understand Mm. what they've done. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And if it's then whatever they did impacted other people, they have to feel that on the other people as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think if we had that awareness of what what we do here, that we will feel that we might mm-hmm. think about our mm-hmm. actions before we move forward on something. Yes. Yeah. I totally agree with that for sure. Um, could you please share where um, listeners can find out more about you? So I'm on all the social medias um, and you can find me under Bromwyn Jane Medium. And my website is bromwynjanemedium.com. And there you'll find, mm-hmm. you know, I could have readings, but there's also educational links there where you can study with me or listen to a meditation I've done, all kinds of things like that. Mm-hmm. Great. Wonderful. So um, this, you know, this is so fascinating. I'm, <laughs> I feel like I, I'm not even checking what time it is because I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I have a thousand one um, uh, questions to ask, but, you know, I want to know as far as when people are listening and things maybe they can do if they want to try to connect with their own sense, you know, intuition or even if it's connecting with, with those who've passed, you know, are there any, any just little things that you recommend? So there's a there's two things that um, I'm going to suggest. One is to connect with your own soul because that's the first connection we really should have. And, and so what I like to do every, and I like to do it in the morning before we get too busy, is I like to put my non-dominant hand on my heart. And that physical touch actually lights up the centre in our brain that lights up when we get a hug. Mm. So it has an actual response. And then what I do is, and I quite often like to close my eyes because by closing our eyes it takes away um, that visual sense and it, it draws us inward. And I would just ask whoever, whoever's listening, what do I need to know today? What wisdom do they have? And that can be my higher self so that my soul self could even be my loved one that's standing around or listening from the other side. Whatever pops into my awareness is what I will run with. And sometimes it'll just be a singular word, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. rest, whatever. So I like to do that as a connection every day. As far as connecting with my loved ones that have transitioned, I'm going to say when our mind is super busy, It's hard to hear them, to see them, to sense them, to notice what they're sending into our world. So we need to make sure that we, when we want to connect, that we sort of quieten our mind the best we can. And then I'll ask for a sign. Now, I will dictate what that sign is. Some people like to say, send me a feather, send me a coin, look at the coin, see if the date makes sense to me or makes sense to my loved one, date of birth, anniversary birthday coming up these type of things Mm -hmm. feathers are beautiful as well sometimes though we might have a special symbol between us and the loved one maybe they had a favorite bird a favorite beetle a favorite car you know that's our sign send that to me so i know you're around Mm -hmm. and then wait Don't expect it to be here in two minutes because it takes them a while to organise this world. (laughs) You need a bit of patience. (laughs) But also be open to how it shows up. So if, say, for example, we say, I want to see a yellow Volkswagen, then be open to the fact that you may physically see it parked down the street. Mm -hmm. You may see it in an advertisement on the television Mm. or on social media because they can manipulate social media and all that kind of electronic things Mm -hmm. very easily. So be open to how you receive it. So release that expectation that it's got to come a particular way. Mm -hmm. Be open to them giving you messages in songs. They love music. So listen to lyrics, listen to words. If you're thinking about you need help with a particular thing, Ask your loved one, I need help with this. 
if you're standing on a train, a subway, and you hear a com- your ears dropping or you just notice a conversation near you and there's a phrase within that that makes sense to what you need help with, don't dismiss it. Thank them for helping you because they will get those answers to you however they can. Mm-hmm. We just need to open up mm-hmm. our our mind on how they do that because they ha- it takes a little while for them to do it and they've got to manipulate our world to get up into our awareness. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's great. Because, yeah, we may think we want to know how we're going to receive a message (laughs) or a sign, but that's not how it works. (laughs) That's great. That's great advice. I'm sure people will follow that. Hopefully they (laughs) will be a little more patient, um, you know, when we often ask for these things and and we'll just kind of see what unfolds. Yeah. Our loved ones want to help us constantly. That's sort of, you know, one of the things that they want to do, Mm -hmm. Um, particularly if they particularly those that maybe weren't available for us so much when we were here, when they were here, Mm. maybe they were busy, maybe, I don't know, maybe we just didn't have a strong relationship with them. They're the ones that really want to make up for time. They're the Mm -hmm. ones that really want to help us. Mm -hmm. So people sort of like, oh, I didn't really know them or they weren't a great parent or they're the ones like, oh, no, I get it now and I really need to help. I really need to help. So they will want to help you. It's, as I said, it's just about opening up how we allow them to help us and to let go of those expectations that, oh, no, I want, you know, a a car parked on the corner of, you know, 6th and 7th, you know, with a rego that says registration plate 3377 and a man hops out with a black hat. Then I know it's you, Dad. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's a bit much. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And Dad's on the other side going, that's a long list that's going to take me six months <laughs> and you want it tomorrow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> right, we've got to be a bit more patient. <laughs> oh, my God, that's a good one. But <laughs> Oh, my gosh. But, yes, this well, this has been such a fantastic conversation. And I said, I certainly could just listen and listen and listen to um, – to all your experiences and wisdom but um uh Bronwyn you know we're gonna have to uh wrap this up and and definitely all the links are going to be on the show notes so people can find out more about you and everything that you're offering but um you know before we before we end it do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share I think the final thing that I'm going to say is a takeaway for me is through this journey is to remember that to stay connected to what I know is right for me in my heart, to not be distracted by other people's fears that they put on you in regards to what you should do or what's right for you, that you know what's best for you, particularly if you stay connected to your instincts because your head and heart's going to lead you astray every day of the week, to stay connected to your gut and listen to the other people but stay true to what you know is right for you as you step forward in your life, your career, your business. Mm, that's perfect. <laughs> just that's what we, uh, we need to hear. Um, so Bronwyn, I was just want to thank you again for joining me. This is really so informative and um, I'm sure everyone's going to love this. And, and I just want to thank you for joining us. I loved being, um, spending some time with you and, and being on your show and the opportunity to be able to share a little bit of my world and who I am. Well, thank you so much. Um, everyone, I know you enjoyed this show. Please make sure that you share this with friends, contacts, and all social media. And also, as I mentioned, the links will be in the show notes and you can check out more of what Bronwyn is up to and what she offers. And I hope that you will do that. So once again, some Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. And uh, thank you for joining us and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to stop by womenentrepreneursradio.com to read extended bios of the show guests and also find links there for their websites and any offers that they have shared with you. And stop by our Facebook page at facebook.com slash womenentrepreneurs.